Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Welcome, everybody, to another glorious episode of the Put On Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with Ryan Holmes, and we are podcasting on the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day out here in Southern California. P O R S P R is my Twitter handle, and Ryan Holmes is R H O L M 22. Um, he is, we, I, I'm in California right now. He's all over. He's all over the world right now doing his thing. Um, so we're going to do a little quick mock draft with, with Ryan's, Ryan versions of the, of the mock draft. Um, if you listen to the players he likes and also some of the draft, the drafts have been pretty good. The Braves would be in a good spot if they actually pick two Ryan picks, but well, that, 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 I think they're here no there. So Ryan, I'll let you go with the with your mock draft with the first pick, um, number thirteen in two thousand twenty four draft for the Raiders. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump into a mock draft simulator here. Um, no trades. Um, so this, I'm not predicting they're gonna trade up, trade back. I'm not gonna try to stockpile picks. We're just gonna go with who's available at the t- on the board at the time. Um, I'm going to jump in here. Raiders on the clock at 13. Uh, players that are available, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, uh, Talisi Fuaga, Brian Murphy, uh, Troy Fontananu. Um, so there's some offensive linemen here, J.C. Latham, but the Raiders have to get the quarterback position figured out first and foremost. They have to compete in the AFC where there's an arms race where teams have young quarterbacks all over the AFC, and the Raiders don't have anything close um, at that position to compete with those players. The Raiders cannot go into this season with Aiden O'Connell uh, and Gardner Minshew in a third or fourth round quarterback because you know what's going to happen? They're going to be in the same position next year and mm-hmm. the quarterbacks are not good next year and this, the year after that. I know a lot of people talk about build up the roster around them first. The problem with that is if you build up the roster and you keep winning seven, eight, nine games, you're never going to be in position um, to get the first or second quarterback in a draft class. You're going to be choosing the third, fourth, fifth guy in most draft classes. This is a very good draft class. Getting the fourth or fifth guy in this class would be similar to getting the second or third guy in most most classes. Um, The rhetoric that Aiden O'Connell would be the fourth fourth quarterback taken and the Raiders would take him at 13 this year if he were available is complete nonsense. Um, They didn't take him to the fourth round last year. Um, For someone to say that they would take him at 13, that would mean they had to have had a first round grade on him last year. We all know they did not. Um, so miss me with all of that rhetoric. The Raiders have to get a quarterback. They have to get it right. They have to try. Um, in this, I'm going to bypass these players because I think you can get starting offensive linemen in the second, third, fourth, fifth round. Look around the league. You don't. Most teams don't have five offensive linemen. They're taking the first round. I understand right tackle is a giant issue. We'll try to address that later. Um, I would rather try to address holes on the roster later and get the quarterback I want than the other way around, address the holes and then not have a quarterback. So I am going to take Michael Penix, who is available in this exercise at 13. Um, I don't love the value there, but he's a quarterback. The Raiders, if you're going to wait for value and the quarterback to align, you're going to be waiting another 10 years before the Raiders take a quarterback. Um, Or or, or 17. Oh, yeah. I mean... (laughs) It's going to be a long, long time. Um, so we, we're going to take Penix in the first round. Mm-hmm. We're going to come around to, to pick 44. Um, surprisingly, Bo Nix is still unavailable in this exercise, as is Spentler, Spencer Rattler, but we've already taken care of that need. Um, so I'm going to go look and see who's available now. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, the interior offensive lineman, is available. Yes. From That's a, an intriguing option there. I know Andre James came back. Um, but Jackson Powers can play guard as well. Um, Xavier Worthy uh, is available. Ernest uh, Enius Rakestraw Jr., the corner out of Missouri, is available. I'm going to take a quick peek and see if there's some offensive linemen tackles here that I like. Uh, Roger Rosengarten is available who could step in and play right tackle. He was the blindside protector of Michael Penix at University of Washington. Mm -hmm. Um, In this exercise, I am going to take the center, though, the center guard, the interior offensive lineman, Jackson Powers Johnson out of the University of Oregon. So I think that's great value if they can get him at pick 44. He's immediate day one starter at right guard. Um, so, 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 and, and he, he can't, he can't flex out to tackle, right? He's just, he's just, he's interior, which is fine because they need a right guard anyway. 
So that gives them a guy who can just move individuals out the way. Yeah, you just you just plug him in there, and then you have a you have a you basically have Parham and Powers Johnson as center options to replace Andre James in if and when they want to move on. They can get out of that contract after next year. So essentially, it's a one year deal um, as far as cap hits are concerned. It's not going to be hard to move on from Andre James if they want to, or they can keep him, uh, and then you have your interior three guys set. But they need a, a guy inside that can move powerful defensive linemen, and that that's what the guy at Oregon can do. Uh, when we go to the third round, this is probably where the offensive tackle class starts to thin out. Um, I'm going to look at that direction. I'm going to see who's available. Uh, the better players, I'll skip, you know, tight ends and safeties, stuff the Raiders will not address probably in, in this early in the draft. But um, uh, Junior Colson is available out of Michigan. He's he's a linebacker. Patrick Paul out of Houston. Um, you have Rook. Or Hirohu, I, I don't know, even know if we're saying that right. The defensive tackle out of Clemson uh, is intriguing. We want to look at offensive linemen. Um, you still have Blake Fisher, who's a right tackle out of Notre Dame. And in this exercise, again, this is a mock draft. People don't need to jump in the comments and say, well, that player would never be available. But by the luck of the draw, Roger, Roger Rosengard is available in this mock draft uh, in the third round for the Raiders, who was, again, the blindside protector for Michael Penix at Washington. So the Raiders were going to pick up him. I'm going to mock him to the Raiders. So in a three round mock draft, the Raiders walk away from this with Michael Penix. They get one of the best centers in the draft who can also play guard and a right tackle. I think that's a home run. If the Raiders can walk away from the draft with the quarterback and two starting offensive linemen, that that's a win in my opinion. And I think, I think that's kind of the way the Raiders have to go because they didn't do much on offense in the off season. So it's, especially with um, uh, offensive line depth, they, the, the quarterback is going to be, they, they have Minshew, they have uh, Aiden O'Connell. None of them are long-term answers at, at the position. We all know that. You have to be really kind of silly to think that that is a long-term answer for you at quarterback. Um, so the, the, the whole position, the position, the positions that I saw the Raiders doing in this situation was I saw the same thing. I saw the same thing where it was this quarterback, offensive line, offensive line. So you guys who are screaming offensive line, you get your offensive lineman and you get got two starters and got the quarterback and, and, and got the quarterback. So, I mean, I don't, I think the thing about, I think that I was more Knicks than Penix, but as the exercise has gone on, I have kind of, I just, I just feel like his arm talent, like I've, there could be a game the Raiders play, right, where they're doing nothing for three quarters. And defense keeps them in the game. And Michael Penix makes two throws, and they have a lead in the fourth quarter. Like, that's the kind of arm talent he really has. And, like, nobody who is in-house now right now for the Raiders have that has that kind of talent um, at that um, quarterback position. No, they don't. I'm not a huge Bo Nix guy. If the Raiders take Bo Nix, obviously, you know, I'll have to I'll have to warm up to that. I don't think Bo Nix is a quarterback that can carry an offense. He doesn't have that kind of talent um, to basically, you know, put it on his back in a two minute drill or, or he's going to be able to score, you know, 30 plus games and 30 plus points in an NFL game. Yeah. I question his accuracy down the field. Um, just kind of how his footwork and, and people that have listened to the show know I've been saying that since, you know, middle of the college football season. I, I don't love his footwork and he's very good on throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage and in the short area. But when he has to drive the ball down the field, he doesn't have the natural arm strength or accuracy to do that consistently that Michael Penix can. not And with Michael Penix, you can run play action. You can throw the ball down the field. You're going to need more speed at wide receiver because we talked about yeah. this as well in the fall. You need a track team out there. Yeah. So it's it's good to have Trey Tucker on the roster, but a player like Jacoby Myers is probably not going to be a long-term fit if you have Michael Penix because he can't stretch the field and work vertically. De Devontae Adams, as good as he is, is getting into his, his mid-30s here in the next year or two. So the Raiders are going to have to find speed in the next year or two in the draft or in free agency to kind of build up the, the outside receivers. Um, as Devontae Adams ages, and then he becomes more of that intermediate underneath receiver. So, um, and then you have Michael Mayer, who as well is not a guy that's going to stretch the field, but the Raiders have to figure out the quarterback this year. And, and 
I know there's people out there that are saying, you know, well, we'll just get Sugar Sanders next year. And those people also think he's the best quarterback in the draft. So what happens? The best quarterback in the draft is going to go oh, probably one. in the top five. Yes, exactly. And those teams probably aren't trading out if, if a team is up there. Unless it's a bad draft where like a Kenny Pickett went 20th. But um, if they believe that Shadur Sanders is the savior and he is the guy for next year's class and you believe he's a franchise quarterback, then why would you not believe that he's going to go in the top five? So pinned to my um, Twitter handle, um, Ryan has his um, his breakdown of like the, I, th- I think the most recent year is second round quarterbacks, and it's pretty bleak. Like I mean, I know people want to just like let, let's imitate the Niners, let's do this, let's do that. Well, Antonio Pierce doesn't you know, say what you want about Antonio Pierce. He doesn't have the pedigree, offensive pedigree. Of um of Shanahan, like in Shanahan, they Shanahan they, they got a whole bunch of things. They got a whole positive thing going on over there. Um, but the one thing they haven't done is they don't have a quarterback who can be that be dynamic in a big moment. So Jimmy G wasn't that guy. Trey Lance wasn't that guy, and Brock Purdy wasn't that guy. So like they've lost Super Bowls by this much because of because of Mahomes and, and his ability to be special um in those moments. They are they are a good team, but they could be they could be one of the really good teams who never won a Super Bowl. Um, or um, as far as that goes, so you do you do you really want to build a team like the Jets, where they just have every piece of the puzzle? Like the Jets have the Jets. The, the, I mean, if you go back and look at the uh, draft they had with Sauce Gardner, that draft is pretty impressive. But they didn't have a court. They don't have a quarterback. And How many playoff games have they won with that roster? Boom! That's it. So that's it. And they and 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 they took they took they took a quarterback, and they pivoted off of that quarterback, and they went. I got got Aaron Rodgers, and when Aaron Rodgers is not doing this thing on on social media, he's a pretty good quarterback. And we'll see if he stays healthy this year and takes just to to new heights. But if Michael Penix, Bo Nix, um, you know, uh, Drake May, God forbid, if none of those guys work for the Raiders. You can pivot off of them. This is not the Marcus Russell thing. Like it just really isn't. Like you can pivot off of that guy and move on. But I do think that Penix's ability to just just to sling it at times is really going to help them. And if they can run the football on top of that, like we're talking about play action fake old school Boomer Sison type type deal with him as well too. Yeah, I, I'm going to read the list of second round quarterbacks for everyone out there that's saying, because a lot of people probably don't follow either one of us on, on Twitter or accent. And I'm just going to read the name so they know what I'm talking about. The, the, in the last 20 years, this is every quarterback that's been taken in the second round. And tell me if A, you want one of these guys. And then you can see the hit rate here is, is next to nothing as far as getting a guy that can win a Super Bowl. Will Levis, Kyle Trask, Jalen Hurts. So Jalen Hurts is a hit. Drew Locke, Deshaun Kaiser, Christian Hackenberg, Derek Carr, whatever you want to say about him, he hasn't won a playoff game, let alone has a chance to win a Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo, Geno Smith, Brock Osweiler, Andy Dalton. Andy Colton got to the playoffs. He did not win a playoff game. To my recollection, he may have won one or two, but I don't think he did. I think they lost like five straight first round games. Colin Kaepernick, Jimmy Clausen, Pat White, Brian Baum, Chad Henney, Kevin Kolb, John Beck, Drew Stanton, Kellen Clemens, Tavarius Jackson. That's in the last 20 years. That's every quarterback taken the second round. The chances of the Raiders waiting to get a guy in the second round or third round is means you're probably getting a guy that's going to be on this list. And there's maybe two or three guys you'd actually want on this list, and the rest of these guys never panned out for one reason or another. Yes. And a lot of times the guys who go later, they end up going to good teams. So, you know, so, so they have a better roster around them, whatever, whatever, like, like look at Kenny Pickett, okay? Kenny Pickett, like he was a first round pick, but I mean, he still had a good, like, it's just time to take a quarterback. I've been talking about this, like, this is like a, a coming to fruition here. Cause I've been talking about this particular draft for like, I don't know, three or four years now. Cause I, I cause especially when Caleb hit the scene and I saw who else was in this draft class. Um, I think, so one thing I wanted to discuss real quick, because I had a question about this, is how come more quarterbacks have not done what Eli and John Elway has done? Um, as far as like just saying, hey, you know what? Throw my arms up. I'm not going there. I'm not playing there. 
Um, and because I because I think this whole, you know, whether it's just being on Twitter and people talking foolishness, they're saying that like, why doesn't Jaden Daniels do that? Because he knows how much everybody begs and wants to know how much he wants to play with AP. Um, right now, Jaden Daniels is is looking like the second second um, quarterback to be taken in this draft. Well, the higher you go, the more money you get paid. It's a slotted draft. So True. by forcing your way down, you're giving away money. Um, and the second time, the, the, these are players that have strong beliefs in themselves. They they think they're going to go in and turn these places around and win. Um, and they want to be the guy in those situations to do that. Why more people haven't really done it, it, it it's really hard to do and get and get away with. It's, it's agent-driven as well. Yeah. And, you know, Eli did it. But he kind of forced his way to the Giants, and it was kind of a pick swap at number four for Phillip Rivers. It's really hard to pull off. I mean, because if you do it and you force your way somewhere, and you're going to get scrutinized every game you lose, and the media is going to be on you all the time. And you're you're going to become an instant villain in 29 cities versus the one team you go to. I, I just think, you know, these guys want to go – one one one. They want to go at the top of the draft. They want to go second. They want to go third. They don't want to go, you know, 14, 15, 16 and go later in the draft. All those guys go there. But I just think it's a, re- a really hard scenario to basically pave your way to find a landing spot you want. It, it's it's almost impossible to do because if it just takes one team to call your bluff, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, exactly. If Jaden Daniels says, I don't want to play in Washington, I want to play in Vegas, and Washington takes him, what's his recourse? To not to, sign his contract and not make any money? To sit out the whole year? To like go that? play in the U, the USFL or the UFL or whatever it is now? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. As far as that goes. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Um, I, I just, I mean, even, even people, people were talking about maybe Caleb Williams doing that, but then yeah, um, Colin Cowherd, who's really, he really too, too knows them and talks to them all the time said that when he spoke to them immediately, he said the first thing that they said, they will, they said hundred percent, we will go where we are picked. We do not want to be the villains of the national football league. He's already more, one of the most hated players in the NFL as it right now, <laughs> which is like hilarious to me, but it's still, it's just, it is what it is. But like, you know, so it, it's, it's about like, you know, the Raiders did, it's a rate. I'm not sure where they would have gotten drafted. I'm not sure where they would have been as far as the draft goes if they kept Josh McDaniels. Definitely would have been in the top 10. Um, you know, they were 13th now with AP. So, you know, I mean, I think if they lost the Bronco game, they'd have been eighth. Somebody, somebody, somebody said they'd be eighth or ninth. Somebody said that. Who knows? But it is what it is. You're 13th. Deal with the reality of being 13th and see what happens as far as, um, as, far as that goes for them. And they're, it's, they're still in a good position. Lucky for them, there's six guys who might go in the first round. Um, and I would not trade back. I'm telling I mean, like, you know, you have, you got McVay sitting there. You got, you know, uh, Pittsburgh sitting there. You got the former offensive coordinator sitting in Seattle. Like, if you go drop back too far, you're going to end up with no quarterback at all. And Minnesota's sitting there at 11 and 23. Like, how far can you go? Minnesota yeah. could take a different position at 11 and then if you fall back they could just jump you and take Penix and then then where do you go if you believe Michael Penix is your quarterback of the future you take him at 13 you don't mess around and try to get him at 18 or 21 you just do it um if you don't believe he is and and you want to go a different route at quarterback that's fine um but history tells us that if they don't take one in the first round they're going to be doing this again very quickly yeah and then Chances are they might be doing it again anyways if they take the first round. But like, yeah. if you don't try, you're never going to know. And and this whole this whole weight build up the roster. These contracts on these first and se- sec- anyone taken after the first round is on a four year deal. Nate Hobbs' deal is coming up. He's on a four year deal. Devon Diablo. If you hit on some of these later picks, and and then you hit on a first round pick or two, within two or three years, you're going to have to pay all of these guys. Yeah. And. You need to go the other way. You need to get the quarterback first. The, the Raiders roster is built up somewhat now. Um, yeah. They're in a good position to take on a rookie, but you need to go get the rookie now. And then you can, you can for two or three, four years, you can just load up around. Look what Houston's doing. Yeah. 
Um, and they're not the only team that's done it this way. Look what Miami did around two. It hasn't really paid off, um, but they did it. They're trying. You have to try. At some point, you have to try. The, the, fact, the, the fact that there's Raiders fans sitting around that think that let's just take a guy in the fourth round, let's go with Aiden O'Connell and try to get to the playoffs. The, the goal is not to get to the playoffs. The goal is to win the Super Bowl. Because if you get into the playoffs with Aiden O'Connell, unless the defense is really good for four weeks in a row, you're not beating those other quarterbacks. No question about it. And I, I mean, and at least, I mean, at the very least, like, I mean, Tua is, Tua is, I think Tua has made the playoffs a couple of times in a row. And then, you know, I mean, like, you got to, in order to go to the Super Bowl, you got to make the playoffs. And, <laughs> and that hasn't changed. You have so, to win multiple playoff games. Exactly. No question <laughs> about it. And the, and the Ravens have not, forget about the Ravens have not had two consecutive seasons in a row that have been good in a long time. So, and last year wasn't good either. I know, I know everybody wants to say it was a good season. It was, it was they went eight and nine. So that, 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 that's not a good season. Um, unless you're gonna, that's um, not a good season. Unless that's you're Mike gonna, Tomlin, he's never you, done exactly. And <laughs> un, 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 unless you're gonna channel your Tom Cable, um, and Tom Cable, we're not season. losers anymore. We're not losers anymore. As you need to go I'm, nine and eight to say that, though. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it, it, it's just time to take them. Like, I mean, don't play games with this anymore. I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, you know, I mean, it, we've overdrafted forever. So, like, this whole like you can't reach for a quarterback the guy is the guy has a guy that guy has an exceptional arm he is a good leader he's dealt with a bunch of adversity so he's tough it's not like he's like a guy who's been he's been like you know but this has been like a cakewalk for him to get to this point um so you know go go do what you gotta do i i definitely and i i like the fact that like in your in your mock draft if they're able to get you know um rosen garden to play to play right tackle he knows i mean he's been you know that's his that's his guy from college so that so that might even work out even better too so i don't know my counter argument to the reach don't reach for quarterback would be most teams do reach at the quarterback like unless you're picking one one or you're picking at the top first second third and there's two or three guys if you're not taking a quarterback in the top three you're probably reaching for them at some point in the first round or second round did the Bills reach for Josh Allen? Yeah, at the time, people thought they did. It, it's easy retrospectively to say, what a great move. They went up and got him. Did the Chiefs reach for Patrick Mahomes that year? A lot of people would say yes by trading up and taking him at 10 because a lot of people didn't have him there. Yep. Um, so if you're taking a quarterback outside of the top two or three, mm -hmm. in that particular draft, most people are going to say you you were reaching. You want to – if you if you want to see some some funny stuff, go back and read what um, Travis Kelsey was saying when they drafted Patrick Mahomes, and it, it changed just a little bit over the years. Changed a little bit. Changed a little bit. So it is what it is. As far as they're far all as suspects until you draft them, and then you yes. find out if they're prospects. Exactly. 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 Um, that's it, Ray. I mean, do you, do you have anything else about the draft that the Raiders? Do you think the Raiders should Raider fans should be? Um, looking for as far as that goes. I mean, it's it, listen. The it, it's here. We know it was right. It's it's coming. This it finally we made it to draft week, um, and it's a couple of days away. What are your kind of your, your final thoughts about the Raiders um, drafting here and Tom Tulus Tom Telesco in his first go round here with the Raiders? I mean, T. Yeah, if Tom Telesco doesn't address the quarterback position yeah. very early in this draft, yeah. I'm going to start asking if he has photos of Mark Davis because how uh, did he get the job if he went yeah. in there and, and didn't sell Mark Davis uh, on the, yeah. I'm going to go get a quarterback. Yeah. Um, I will go on record and say, if they don't get a quarterback this year, yeah. like one of those top four or five guys, if they end up having to go the Michael Pratt or the Spencer Rattler route, the Tom sure. Cluster will not have a job in three years. He will not be the rate because they won't get a quarterback next year. No, um, so he's won't. going to be out of a job if he doesn't figure out how to get one of those guys this year. I won't say as much about Antonio Pierce because I think that it, he'll be around for a little while as long as he coaches the defense and the defense plays well. But Tom Telesco was brought in to get a quarterback. His job is to walk away from this draft with a quarterback. If he doesn't do that, it's a failure. Yeah. Well, well said. Well said. Well said. Well said. Um, <laughs> Rare Nation. The draft is here. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be on live, I'm gonna be on live, at, yeah. I, I'm live for that one. I'm, um, I Ryan, will. Add this. 
Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm going to add this as well. Yeah. If the Raiders stay at 13 and they take an offensive lineman and that offensive lineman turns out to be an average player, if he's just an average right tackle, yeah. that's not worth the risk of not trying to get the quarterback. The only way that works out is if that player becomes a Pro Bowl, you know, multi-year Pro Bowl playing player right tackle. Yeah. If it turns out to be an average offensive lineman and you missed out on the opportunity of trying to get the quarterback, it's a failure as well. I mean, I would even argue that if he turns out to be an all-time great tackle, right tackle, the end, but but Penix goes to McVay. And or he, he goes to Denver. Or he goes to Denver. <laughs> you know, even worse, go to Denver. And then, I mean, those teams get their quarterback in the future. I mean, we're sitting here looking, oh, we had a great offensive, we had a nice offensive line. This is beautiful. I would also add, this isn't just about Michael Penix. Like, this is about that group of quarterbacks. Obviously, they're not going to be able to get their hands on Williams, most likely Daniels. But if they can find their way to get their hands on Drake May, um, whatever you think about J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix, like, they have to get, in my opinion, one of those five guys. They can't walk away from the draft without one of those five guys. And they need to do whatever it takes to get one of those five guys, in my opinion. It's time. Yeah, it's time. It's 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 beyond time. Um, you know, I would have pulled the trigger. I mean, a couple of years ago, but um, on, on how's guys, Connor I, Cook doing? You know, they took him in the fourth round. How'd that work out? I don't know, but the guy who who's picked right behind him is, is not bad. Um, Dak Prescott. He's not. He's not. He's not. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's not. You know, he's not. How's he's Andrew not, Walter doing? Oh, she he was a fourth that. rounder. It's funny how people like. It's funny, like people like will bring up all the, all the busts on Twitter, and I'm like, you know what? These teams in the AFC seem to have not done a bad job drafting quarterbacks. Like, I mean, if Tua is on the on the low side, it's like that's not bad. Like, if you if you, I mean, that, that's a pretty it's a pretty good group. I mean, look just look at the NFC, the, the, um, the AFC East alone has has three talented quarterbacks right there. So it's just I don't keep I don't, taking them until you have one that can compete with number fifteen in Kansas City. Ron Wolf compete with number seven in Buffalo or compete with number nine and I believe that's nine in Cincinnati. Like those are the guys you're facing. Yeah. You, you, you have to be those guys. Or number I, what's CJ Stroud? Number seven in, in Houston. In Houston, yeah. I mean it's just I, don't, I, I, I we didn't even name the other five guys there. They don't have anyone close to being as good as either. Yeah. I mean Lamar Jackson, yeah, he's 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 pretty good too. Um it's just it's just crazy. It's it, it's crazy. To me, it's like the argument is I don't even know how to keep having the argument. I, I just keep like, people, people who are on the same wavelength as us, we, we talk on the phone and I'm like, dude, how could they not see we need a quarterback? And I just don't know, man. Everybody thinks when they get a, a somebody in silver and black, they're, 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 they're the best player in the league. I just don't get it. I just really don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Hey, uh, no, Connell's not a Hall of Famer. He's, he's not even I, – I will say this again. I'll say this again. If Aiden O'Connell was in this draft with this quarterback class, he would not get drafted. And I don't care. I, I don't know him. if I go that far, but he's probably somewhere in the same range, fourth, fifth round. I just, I just, to I say that he would go in the first round in this draft and the Raiders would take him 13 is preposterous. Second or third overall. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. All right. Enjoy the draft. Um, I'll try to be on um, during, during the draft. Um, I'll see if, I mean, I, who knows where Ryan will be. He'll be somewhere in this. I don't even know right now. I, I think somewhere <laughs> in the Midwest. He, he literally, you literally don't even know. That's the funny part about it. Yeah. You, literally, you literally don't know. So, um, so and plans uh, change daily. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you gonna you got to text immediately. Oh, I got to be there now. My travel agent is, isn't happy with me right now. <laughs> cancel this, book this, cancel that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, have have a good time where you're at. Get some barbecue, whatever do whatever you do. Raider Nation, um, the draft is here. The Raiders are all going to be on the clock soon. Um, probably like you know, hour and a half, two hours into it. Hopefully, they can make the right choice, and the right choice is quarterback. All right, see you, Ryan. All right.